Story time, which is our usual Wednesday morning baby group, um, and I'm going to be focusing on our favorite songs and rhymes. And you can um, supplement it with some books at home or ones that you find online. Um, it'll be pretty short, so you can expect maybe 15 minutes or less of programming here. If you're new to baby time, welcome. If you're a regular, then hopefully you'll find um, a lot of the same elements that we do uh, as when you're sitting here with me in person. Um, the whole goal of baby time is to give caregivers ideas and resources and techniques for spending quality time with their little one and for um, building up all those connections in their little brains. Um, babies have a zillion little connections in their brains and when they get used they get reinforced and strengthened and when they don't get used they kind of break off and die. Um, and then you end up um, old like me and you can't remember anything. <laughs> so um, hopefully I'll be able to entertain your little ones here but really even in person the whole point of this baby time is to um, it's for you, it's for the grown-ups, it's, it's to get you, like I said, some resources, some ideas, and ways to play with your baby. So, um, so you guys can stop a rhyme and go back and repeat it if you didn't catch all the words the first time. Um, we uh, do a ton of repetition, everything I do I'm going to do twice. Um, every day when we're here in story time we do the same rhyme, usually at least once or twice. Um, it's a little more fun for the kids, they can start to learn what to anticipate, what to expect, but also it does, uh, it reinforces it in your head too, so you can go home and do it again with them. Um, and also if you are able to join us again for another story time or when we are back in person, you come and join us here on our little blue rug, you'll find that we also repeat these same rhymes week to week to week. Um, again, builds those, um, builds those connections, but it also, it also uh, gives kids an idea of what to expect and that way they, um, they start to anticipate, especially the older they get, they anticipate and look forward to the next rhyme or the next tickle or the next bounce. So um, yeah, just anything you're doing at home, whether you're following along with me or if you're reading a book or learning a new rhyme on your own, just that repetition makes it a little more fun for everyone. Um, yeah, so for the most part, today's outline is going to look pretty much like our typical Wednesday morning. Um, if you are looking for more, then there are some links right by the link that you clicked on to get to this video. You're going to find some, um, you might find some storybooks online that the, the story might read to you, or you can kind of just click through and look at pictures as you go, especially with the babies sometimes, just looking at the pictures and talking about what you see. Um, that's what we librarians call a picture walk. Just look at it and talk about what you see. They might not sit for whatever words are on the page, but you can point out like, hey, there's a cat. We have a cat at home. Um, make those connections and those kinds of things. Um, so you will find some storybooks like that. You're also going to find a few links for um, story times uh, that, that other people are reading online. And um, we have a couple of resources too specific to the baby story time. There are, um, I'm going to put a link here that's going to take you to the site where I find our resources for our baby sign language. Um, and it's got tons and tons of stuff. Um, and so if there are any words specific to you or your household that you might want to try, you can find those there. Um, and then you're also going to find some links to actually a couple of secret librarian resources that I like to use for, um, for rhymes. And again, specific to babies, there's a lot that are good with um, baby bounces and ones that have uh, rhymes with our scarves that we use, um, that we use in story time every week. So, um, hey, stop talking and start playing, right? All right, so here we go. So every day we'll start, every Wednesday, we start our baby story time, waking up our little bodies, saying hello. I'm gonna use Freddie Bear, he's gonna be my stand-in baby. Hello, everybody. Um, so we're gonna get started. What I'm doing with him is, is what you can do with your little guys at home. Say hello to your toes, to your toes, to your toes. Say hello to your toes, hello toes. Get a little vocabulary, say, hey, that's what those are, those are toes. And again, all that reinforcement, that repetition, your baby will look at it one day and be like, oh, that's where my toes are. So let's scooch up, we're gonna go right to their tummies. Let's find their tummies, give them a good little tickle. Say hello to your tummy, to your tummy, to your tummy. Say hello to your tummy, hello tummy. 
and then we'll stretch their arms up if your baby's cooperative you can stretch their arms up they can touch their own head you can touch your head if they're looking at you show them this is your head touch your baby's head um, again just kind of any indication reinforce all those little connections say hello to your head to your head to your head say hello to your head hello head and the head is a great one while you're on the topic you can always say hey you've got ears you've got a nose this is your hair um yeah feel free to just stop in the middle of any of these rhymes introduce or kind of go over whatever you are working on with your baby all those parts although now is probably not a good time to touch all over your baby's face so you can stick with their hair <laughs> um yeah and then our last verse for this one's we're going to wave our hands and again if baby will cooperate great get their hands waving if not you can just demonstrate show them we're going to wave hands say hello to our friends Say hello to your friends, to your friends, to your friends. Say hello to your friends, hello friends. Unfortunately, you're probably sitting at home right now, so you're not hanging out with a whole lot of friends, but um, you can always grab some stuffed animals, line them up. Those are great friends to say hello to. Freddie Bear highly approves of saying hello to stuffed animals. Um, or you can always, um, you know, say hello to your cat. Say hello to, you know, anyone else who's in the house, siblings or, or other parents. Um, so you can always make these fun and interactive, even though we're rolling with completely new circumstances here. All right. That's our welcome. That's how we get started. We're going to give horsey, we're going to give baby a little horsey ride right now. So um, take your baby. If they uh, feel a little more comfortable facing you, then you can turn them around. Again, depends on your baby, on their age, on their size, their comfort level, your comfort level. So we're going to do some rocking. We're going to do some lifting. Do whatever works for you and your baby. If rocking for you just means holding them tight in your arms, that's okay. If they're a little older and they like to go nuts, then, you know, do what works for you and for them. So here we go. Rickety, rickety, rock. Rocking horse, over the fields we go. Rickety, rickety, rocking horse. Giddy up, giddy up, whoa! Get that horsey, whoa! They're gonna toss that baby right up in the air. Again, whatever level you have, uh, comfort level for how how active or how mild you want to be with your little guy. Let's run through that one again real quick. Rickety, rickety, rocking horse, over the fields we go. Rickety, rickety, rocking horse. Giddy up, giddy up, whoa! Oh, that's a fun ride. Usually, especially maybe after they get used to it two or three times, uh, you get a lot of good giggles on that one. So hopefully your baby enjoys that one too. All right, I'm gonna throw a couple of books in here. We don't do a lot of books um, with babies anyway because really the point is the um, the words, the songs, the rhythms, um, more than the books. They're not usually too interested in the books. Um, so we're going to, again, we're going to do a picture walk. So we're going to kind of look through this book and talk about it. Not going to read all the words. This one is I'm the Biggest Thing in the Ocean by Kevin Sherry. And this is about a giant squid. He is so big, he does not even fit on this page. For the babies, since we are, um, you know, looking at the pictures, as much as we're telling a story, you can talk about what you see. I see two big eyes. Where are your eyes? You've got two eyes there, just like this big giant squid. He's blue. All sorts of things you can talk about, but he's also big. He's so big. These are a whole bunch of little shrimp. I'm bigger than these shrimp. I'm bigger than these clams. He's bigger than all of these other animals in the ocean. They all live in the ocean, in the water. Bigger than this crab. Maybe if you guys get to the beach next summer, you might see some little crabs scooting around. Crabs have those snappy little, snappy little claws. You better watch out for them. This guy's a jellyfish. He's a bit funny looking. He's got all these tentacles, just like our squid has all these tentacles. We just can't see them all because they're not on this page. Oh, turtles. We love turtles. Turtles are so much fun. I see one two, three, four, there are five turtles on this page. They're all taking their little flippers, going for a swim. If you guys are feeling super interactive, go fill up your bathtub, give your kid a good swim. Um, <laughs> again, depends on how much you and your baby love water. Um, just uh, different ways you can make these connections at home with what we see in a book. I'm even bigger than this octopus. That octopus is another guy with all those tentacles, just like this squid has these big tentacles, but our big blue squid is the biggest one yet. Ooh, I'm even bigger than that shark. Shh. Definitely 
don't want to scare this in our shark. He's super quiet. He's got big teeth. Yeah, I would not want to sneak up on that shark. I'm bigger than all these fish. I'm the biggest thing in the ocean. He's so big with his big gigantic eyes that we talked about and we looked at, right? Is he the biggest thing you see? Uh-oh, I see a great big open mouth, ah, and a little eye. Looks like that squid is not the biggest thing in the ocean here. All right, so there's just a quick example of going through a book, not quite reading all the words, um, but sharing the story. And again, like some of those things I threw in there, you know, you're talking about water, go, go play in the water. You get a little water table, you can splash in that, you know, wiggle their fingers in the water, get them in the bathtub, whatever works. Since you guys are at home, you've got probably a whole lot of choices for playing with water, things that we can't quite interact with here at the library. So this is a fun way to, again, go home and make those connections. Um, the next book I'm going to share with you is, um, again, I'm not going to read the whole book, but what I'm going to do is model reading. So instead of me reading a, sh a book to you, sharing it with you on the camera, uh, I'm going to read my book to Freddie Bear here. Um, so uh, just again, another example of when you're reading a book with your little guys, it's not so much about getting through the words or reading the story. It's much more about the, um, the connections you can make or the experience that you share with them while you're sharing that book. And, um, and stopping and letting them react. We're working with babies. This group is the baby group. So you're not necessarily gonna have them stop and say, ooh, what is that? Or, you know, why does he do this? But you are gonna maybe see that they stop and focus or maybe even point to different things. And so you stop and talk about them. Um, the book I'm gonna share with Freddie Bear right now is called Blue Hat, Green Hat. This is by Sandra Boynton. If you've not experienced Sandra Boynton's board books, I highly recommend them. Um, she's a lot of fun. We're gonna go through this book it's great. On every page there's an elephant, a moose, a bear, and a turkey. There's an article of clothing. They are all on every page. We've got blue, green, red, and yellow. Um, and you'll see as we go throughout, they're, um, they're all pretty good, except the turkey. He makes some mistakes. Uh, and again, it's not so much what the book says, but how you share it with your little one. Um, I know when mine were younger, we got a whole lot of crazy baby giggles, um, belly giggles, out of this book. So. Take that time, enjoy yourself, let baby enjoy it. Blue hat, there's an elephant, he's got a blue hat, it's right up there on his head. Right here, we already sang about your head, didn't we? Green hat, the moose is wearing a green hat. Green hat and a red hat. That little guy's a bear. Hey, that's like you, Freddy Bear. He's a bear wearing a red hat. Oops, hey, turkey, that's not how a hat goes, is it? That's pretty silly, Freddy Bear. Oh. They're wearing different things. They're wearing shirts now. Everyone's got something different. Red shirt, blue shirt, yellow shirt. Oops. Not how you wear a shirt, turkey. Pants, oh, turkey's got it wrong again. And even his coat, he just cannot seem to get it straight. Socks, where do our socks go? Socks go on your feet, right? That one's easy. Red socks. Oops. Hey, does turkey have the socks on his feet? No, turkey's wearing socks on his hands. That is really silly. Elephant has red socks and the turkey has yellow socks, but they're not on his feet. Shoes, ugh, turkey's got the shoes on his head. Green shoes, yellow shoes, blue shoes, oops. No, nope, not right. <gasps> hey, I think turkey's finally got it figured out. Check it out, Freddie Bear, we have a yellow hat, green shirt, blue pants, even has purple socks and red shoes from top to bottom, hat, shirt, pants, socks, and shoes. Oops. Dive right into that swimming pool with all his clothes on. So that's a pretty silly one, but um, just taking the time to look at it, again, make some connections, point out things that your baby does know, um, you know, talking about your shoes, wiggle, you wiggle their toes, talking about hats, tap their heads, make those connections. Um, Different way to share a book. Just spend a little more time over the book rather than over the story when you're sharing that at home with your little guys. All right, so a couple more rhymes that we like to do in story time. We always like to do some more rhymes. We do this one every week. We take these little babies. We're gonna put them down in the pot. This is one of those rhymes that uses the word baby, so you can always sub in baby's name when you're at home. And of course, he or she, whatever, fits for you and your family. So here we go. Baby, baby dumpling, put him in the pot. 
butter him. You're gonna rub that butter right up and down just like a turkey you're putting in the oven. And sugar him and sprinkle that sugar all over, tickle that baby. And eat him while he's hot. Nom, 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 nom. So if your baby likes a good belly blow, this is a good time for that. If, they, uh, if they're not so into that, maybe, maybe just a little gentle tap. But this is one, again, we get a lot of good laughs. We tend to like this one at baby time. So here we go. Baby, baby dumpling, put him in the pot. Butter him and sugar him and eat him while he's hot. Nom, 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 nom. Who doesn't like a good baby belly, right? And then you can take that baby belly. We're going to take our little finger. Just take one finger. You're going to go right around there, belly button. Round and round the garden went the teddy bear. One step two steps tickle you under there so you can start go around their belly button you're going to just creep your little fingers creep your fingers up you can give them a tickle under the arms under the neck whatever works if baby's not too reactive on those you can always start around the middle and go down their legs tickle their feet um really really whatever works for you all of these um can totally be varied and changed up to to what you and your baby are comfortable with or to your situation you know if if someone's driving and you're in the passenger seat and baby's in the back and you can just, you know, reach their little neck for a tickle, um, you know, if they're fussing in the back seat, just whatever your situation is, just modify these little rhymes, the actions, and you can make them work for, um, for a lot of different situations. Sometimes just hearing the words of a rhyme that you've done um, is comforting to the little guys. So uh, one more reason to do that repetition over and over again. So we'll do that one again real quick. Actually, I'm gonna show you this time, um, you can do it on their hand. Just go around and around their hand and walk up that arm for that tickle, so. Round and round the garden went the teddy bear. One step, two steps, tickle you under there. That silly mischievous teddy bear. I think that would be you, Freddy Bear. Alrighty, I think Freddy's done for the day. So let's say goodbye to Freddy Bear. He's gonna have a seat down here. And real quick, I'm gonna um, just go through the last two elements that we do for story time, for baby time. One we like to do is we always like to share a baby sign. So um, ways your baby can communicate with you before they've got their words. Um, and ways that you can communicate with them um, just without words, either either to again to demonstrate for them wh what they can do, but also to um, just have a little a little language, a little communication uh, without having to to verbalize it. So in this case, we're gonna do book. I thought that'd be a good one to start with on our, our video today. Um, book, you just start with your hands together and open them up, just like you're reading a book. So um, you can reinforce this. You know, grab your book, say, hey, let's go sit down. We're gonna read a book, and then you can make the sign book. Um, and so every time you use that word, you make that sign. And again, it helps baby and eventually you might, you might see them start to parrot these back to you sometimes. So we'll do book. And then uh, our, our last time today is blanket because when you get a book, the next best thing to have is a blanket, especially if you're doing those bedtime stories, you just snuggle right up. And so you just start with your hands closed, kind of like, almost like clothespins. Start with them here at your waist and just pull that up to the shoulders, just like you're tucking them right in under the blanket. Um, so you've got a book and a blanket, and I think you are all set for a cozy day at home, or lots of cozy days at home, depending on how this goes. Um, again, you can find the link. It should be uh, right next to where you click to come to this video, and it's gonna take you to um, the site where, um, where we get these baby signs. It's actually called babysignlanguage.com, so pretty straightforward and easy to get to. Um, and then the last element of story time that we love to do, oh, you know what, Freddie Bear is coming back for this part, is our scarves. I've got these fun little scarves. They are translucent, um, transparent. You can see right through them, so um, you can put them on baby and they don't feel like they're lost. They can still see through the world. So these are lots of fun with peekaboo. You can just kind of float them through the air. But um, you guys probably don't have these at home. I know that's always, um, you know, part of the fun of coming to the libraries. We've got cool things that you don't have, but you can always do the same kind of thing with a burp cloth. Um, maybe you have one that's a little more fun and colorful than this one, but either way, drop that right over baby's head. Say, where did you go? Where's baby? Peekaboo. Um, find them out from under there, or even a little washcloth. You know, they're pretty small, but baby's heads are pretty small too, right? So you can just peekaboo right behind that washcloth. Um, you know, if you have some, some bright, colorful um, fabric, that's fun, and you can do it with a dish towel, a hand towel, like I said, a little burp cloth, a little washcloth, um, lots, of, lots of choices. So um, you can do this at home even if you don't have our scarves. So the first one, actually, the smaller the better for this first one. We like to do, we take to take our scarf, squish it up tight, hide it in your hands. Again, this is a little more fun for the slightly older kids, um, but even the babies like to watch these fly. So here they go. Jack in the box, he sits so still. Will he come out? Yes, he will. And you'll fly that scarf or towel or whatever you've got, fly that through the air 
And um, yeah, like I said, even the little ones who aren't quite ready to anticipate that moment of pop when they see it go flying, it's something different to look at and focus on. Jack in the box, he sits so still. Will he come out? Yes, he will. If you're really good, you can toss it up and see if you can get it to uh, land right on baby's head. Um, kind of like catching something in your mouth. I don't have that talent. All right, the last little rhyme we like to do with these scarves is um, we're going to do a little rhyme. We're going to roll our hands around. And again, they can just kind of watch the colors, watch the, um, the cloth kind of wave through the air. Um, this is one to very familiar tune for our shaka. Um, we're just going to do... Um, we're just going to do the, the one verse with this one. So we're going to take these little scarves or what we have and go up and then we're going to make them go down. So here we go. Roly poly, roly poly, up, 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 up. Roly poly poly, roly poly poly, down, 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 down. All right, and um, again, when you're doing this with baby, you go up, you touch their head, it kind of um, reinforces that idea, up is top, is high, and then down, you can touch their toes, especially if they're actually lying down. Um, you can get kind of top and bottom, up and down, get those, um, get those ideas just a little reinforced with them. So again, lots of ways to play with scarves, do fun things. Uh, lots of times in story time, we will do that rhyme again and again. We go up and we go down. Sometimes we'll go front and back. And again, you can touch their little tummies, touch their little back. So they get that concept of front and back. I don't know what that means, but um, they'll feel like, oh, front, this is in front of me and this is the back. Um, and then a lot of times we'll do fast and slow too. So you can always go nice and slow when you're spinning, when you're waving that scarf, and then go faster, faster, faster for the second round on that one. So that's pretty much it. Grown-ups, don't forget to check the links for the other activities and story times um, and the other um, early learning uh, resources that we have. We've got those links um, since we're all since we're all unprecedented ter territory, kind of working from home here. Um, we've tried to provide a few resources that you can look at, and. Um, Really just don't underestimate the play in your baby's day. I know sometimes, uh, the, depending on how old your baby is, again, there's, there's little ones that are kind of just lying there, kind of just looking around. But, but all these things that you do, and the more you speak with them, the more these are just sinking in and building those reinforcements in their brain. So um, this is a really um, sharing books with them, even if you're not reading the story, sharing books with them, sharing rhymes, songs. Um, is, is huge for, for building all those connections. Um, just, you know, talk about what you're doing. Talk about the color of something. Um, you know, if you're talking about something um, on their body or something that they're wearing. You know, if you're talking about a shirt, touch their shirt. You know, just say, shirt, this is your shirt. Um, sometimes you feel silly kind of repeating yourself or feel silly stuck in the house just talking to a baby. But um, just think that every time you talk to them, every time you open your mouth, you're, you're you know, putting that foundation together for when they are going to be older and learning and reading. So, um, yeah, so keep it up. I hope you all get some good time, play time in in the next days and maybe the next few weeks. Um, and I, I look forward to story time next week. So if not in person, then you guys can all join me here. And um, yeah, I miss seeing your smiles and hearing all those awesome little baby laughs. So I hope we're back together soon. But until then, be well. Take care.